Welcome, indie warriors, to the monstrous, sacrilegious world of Last Days of Lazarus, a dark adventure game developed and published by Darkania Works and Grim Talon. Literary Rose here with I Dream of Indie, and I'm here to offer you my spoiler-free review of this atmospheric, gothic, horror-ish adventure game released on the PC. You got that all, right? Before I go any further, trigger warnings are in order. There are graphic depictions of bodies, nudity, and sexual content in this game. Par for the course for horror games, but please be advised. Last Days of Lazarus takes place in post-Soviet Eastern Europe and puts you in the shoes of, surprise surprise, Lazarus. He receives a desperate call from his sister, asking him to return home after she discovered their mother's hanged body in a closet. Despite his mother's suicide and his sister's pleas for support, he refuses due to unnamed work obligations. One week later, Lazarus finally makes his way to the family home, expressing some regret over not returning sooner, but confident his sister will forgive him. Instead, he arrives to an apartment full of conveniently locked doors and an infestation of some red, deadly organic growth that is quickly taking over the home. As you explore your family home, you discover trinkets, letters, and tapes that slowly unveil the history of this family. A missing monk father, an overly religious and obsessive mother, and a daughter that wants to help but also desperately wishes to leave. Throughout the rest of this narrative, you continue to uncover family secrets, learning more about the strange and supernatural legacy you are a part of. Besides the family home, which is a setting we return to several times as more areas become accessible, you go to a cemetery, a church, another cemetery, and another church. All jokes aside, while the type of environment may not be vastly different, the visuals of this game are quite impressive. Every environment is carefully crafted. I felt the graphics shine the most in the church environments, where it seemed like every object and surface was gilded in some kind of gold and intricate design filled with bright, glittering colors that look like something out of a fantasy novel, providing a very lovely contrast to the otherwise bleak world. Now, while the environments and objects of this game are gorgeous, the character models did feel a touch janky. The models have an abundance of detail in their clothes, their hair, their stance, but they look and feel like objects that just sometimes spit dialogue at you. I wouldn't normally consider this a problem if part of the game's intention is to be a bit spoopy. Many incredible horror games are filled with odd, disturbing characters that lean into that uncomfortable, uncanny valley depiction. But this game leans much more heavily on adventure and family drama than horror, so the scenes that are supposed to hit you in the feels fall completely flat when your character looks like they're just a few frames away from T-posing. And what makes this issue even more egregious is <sighs> the dialogue. Oh sweet Jesus, I can tell the developers tried their best, but this plot and dialogue are laughably bad. Important character deaths get reactions along the lines of, oh no, but then let's get back to the matter at hand because this mystery needs solving and I don't need to mourn, I feel nothing. The plot relies heavily on you finding things spooky and you caring about the characters, but these characters are so two-dimensional that it's hard to feel anything. Also, our protagonist starts out with a bit of a shithead attitude, and after reading one particular item description where he mentions sexually assaulting a woman by forcing a kiss on her, I didn't care much if he lived or died, nor anything about his family and the drama. For female characters, all of our favorites and the classics are here. The virgin, the whore, and the hag. And don't you worry, this game does not pass the Bechdel test. Women are indeed featured, but they don't speak to one another and everything in their lives revolves around men, even the part with two little girls. And for the sexist commenter waiting to type away, let me stop you right now. Your inability to analyze a game is not a positive trait. But please, 
do leave a comment for engagement and signal to everyone else that you're a shithead. Thanks! I felt very duped by this game because it gave me the illusion of an interesting plot. Early on, there's this secret passage, there's an army-related conflict with allusions to a big government conspiracy, but in the end, it all boiled back down to daddy issues and mystical vials. So what's the gameplay? You walk places, you pick up items, you use them, and sometimes you solve some puzzles. Now let's go back to that pick up objects part. That shit pissed me off. I cannot count the number of times I got stuck because I didn't know what the game wanted me to do, which usually was an item I needed but could not find, despite me wandering and clicking all over the environment. And once I did find the object, quite a few of them in their design were not obvious that they were a key item, nor were they often placed in an area that would be very clear to the audience, clear to the player. Outside of getting stuck because I couldn't find a thing, the game was easy. There's no danger, there's no way to die, as far as I could tell. You read notes, item descriptions if you want to, it's really not necessary, and you solve some light puzzles for about four and a half hours, and then the game is over. I hate to be so negative, so let's come back to some positives. The game had no issues running, and the settings were very expansive. Notable options were controlling the camera speed, which I needed to change quite a bit. You can adjust the amount of head bobbing, turn cinematic bars on and off, adjust the brightness, and virtually all parts of the graphics could be brought down to a lower level if your PC is struggling to run this game. So no worries, my potato PC people, you too can play this title. Finally, the sound design is good. The sound effects and the soundtrack fit the atmosphere of each scene and were pleasant to hear. In terms of voice acting, it was fine, if not a touch cringe in the lack of emotional inflection for certain character lines, which of course didn't help the already struggling dialogue and plot issues. I really don't like coming down hard on an indie game, but this narrative just wasn't cutting it. There's potential for so much more, but the story follows a predictable path that never engaged my sense of wonder, curiosity, or fear. If you're looking for a rich story, Last Days of Lazarus should be your last choice. Thank you so much for supporting clickbait free content here at I Dream of Indie. We would now like to take a moment to shout out our brave indie warriors and legends that help to make this channel possible. At the Indie Warriors tier, we have Bill, Christian Cruz, Adriana Amato, CJR, PSC, Julian Colbus, Jesse, Ray Lynn, Marky Mint, Dave Harp, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle, Strict Nine, and Sheik Geek. At the Indie Legends tier, we have Jen Rose, Larkison, Mitchell Hall, Skepticism, C Coil, Nathan Moore, Chris Jackson, Mr. W, Blue Francis 14, The Beefarinis, Business Cody, Chiron, Jace Glover, King of the Hatch, Ophidian Mind, and Lord Metroid. Thank you so much for all that you do for independent developers, publishers, and for I Dream of Indie. Everybody else head down to the description box below. Let's defeat the gaming echo chamber and bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.